So my name is Melissa Miller. I work at Scripps Institution of Oceanography as a staff research associate on the GoBGC and SOCOM flow programs. The Argo program is a much bigger program than just what we're working on. There's like 4,000 floats um, all around the global oceans. The floats that we're deploying are inside of these cardboard boxes. As you can see, we've got two left. We've already deployed four from EV Nautilus this week. So we deploy them inside their cardboard boxes. That keeps all the sensors and everything like that safe while we're lowering it over the side of the ship. Basically, they are biogeochemical floats that we deploy all around the world. And those have at least a CTD on them, which stands for conductivity, temperature, and depth. And then our floats are unique because they have even more sensors. We've got a pH sensor and a dissolved oxygen sensor, as well as a nitrate sensor. And then down here at the bottom, there's also a chlorophyll and backscattering sensor um, that pulses different bandwidths of light. Um, to collect that data. And then we deploy the floats. They will go into the ocean and they will go down to 2,000 meters deep, which is about a mile and a quarter, and then park themselves, basically. They have a buoyancy engine in them so they can go up and down in the water column. Slowly over the course of about seven hours, they come back up to the surface and all of their sensors are collecting data as they move their way through the water column. And then at the surface, they beam all that data back to us on land, and then they do that every 10 days. In the meantime, they stay at 1,000 meters depth, and that's where they drift for those 10 days. So we're never quite sure where they're gonna pop up. It might kind of stay in the same general area, or sometimes it catches a current and you know all the way across the Pacific or really far north or south. So this program is super important because it's a really efficient program. The robotic floats are doing work that people basically can't do. Research vessels can only go so many places so many times of the year and be out for so long. Whereas the robots stay out all year round, all sorts of weather conditions, night and day, so that's that much more data in this region. And all of that goes into a public data set, so anyone can look at it, anyone can use it for their research or other purposes. It's really important for us to have collaborators. We rely on ships of opportunity, which means that research vessels or other vessels who are already going out to sea take us along, take our floats and deploy them for us, or in this case, invite one of us to join the science party. This part of the equatorial Western Pacific is really exciting. We don't have a lot of floats in this area, so we were especially excited seeing Nautilus' season over here and really grateful to partner up with Ocean Exploration Trust for being on this transit.